Hello and welcome to Mad About Sports for yet another video. And of course, we are here to talk about Manchester City because Manchester City has done an equal Manchester United, the Manchester neighbor in three peat in winning three Premier League titles in a row under Pep Guardiola. It's been a dominant Manchester City side uh, since the time he has taken over. He has won five titles in six seasons. He's been a powerful, powerful manager. And that's something which we're going to be talking about. Maybe we have to start way back in 2017-18 to understand how the transition took place in the club and how things turned about. Remember, Pep Guardiola has got the reputation of winning leagues all across the world, wherever he is traveling. He won it in Spain. He won it in Bundesliga. Now, when he came over to Premier League for Manchester City, the hopes were high. And not just that, the stakes were pretty high too. Because there was a reason why Pep Guardiola was brought in to uh, replace Pellegrini at the start of Manchester City's season in 2016-17. Primarily because there was a reputation which he carried and the ideology and the philosophy as well. Now, the story of the rise of the Blue Moon, everybody will be talking about 2012 when Aguero scored that last goal against QPR when things turned around for Manchester City. I needed to speak, so yes, that's where the turnaround started for Manchester City. But the Manchester City, the dominant force, started emerging under Pep Guardiola because that is where the team started coming together as a collective unit and started challenging even in European fronts by taking on some of the biggest super giants there. But here we're going to be focusing on the Premier League and how they have been having utter and sure dominance in the Premier League in the last five to six seasons under Pep Guardiola. Now, we have to understand his vision, how he took, how he turned it around. Because remember, even at the start of the season, it was Arsenal who were having that mantle of winning the Premier League. Because they it was it looked like a one-horse race throughout the season, primarily. Because right after the World Cup, with a five-point and close to seven-point lead at times, Arsenal did really look like they were going to run away with the Premier League to a large extent. But then... It was the Manchester City of the old who got onto that winning one and really, you know, distorted Arsenal's momentum and Arsenal just fell apart towards that win. Now, that's what we're going to be talking about, how Manchester City went on to do this because a lot of people across the world, a lot of pundits across the world, including us in our preview videos and even our reviewers did say that how Arsenal has got that slight advantage because of the kind of football they played, how they've turned around the Arteta. That's why you have to give credit to Arsenal as well. Nobody really did expect them to even lead the table for such a long time almost close to 250 days of leading the Premier League table and letting it go in the final and the most crucial moments. And that's what you say in Premier League. If you can get into these winning runs and if you can absolutely hold on to it, then you can go on to win. And that's what Pep Guardiola has done as well. Remember the season in 2019-20 where Manchester City went on to defeat Liverpool by a point. And even the last season in 2021-22 where Manchester City defeated Liverpool by a point. And remember on the last day, it came on the last day where Manchester City were trading 2-0 versus Aston Villa. So these things have happened previously, but then it is just about the belief and it's just about the drive in the team. But let's just look at this season, just primarily as to what, as, what really went right for Pep Guardiola this season. Uh, if you talk about individual stats, we have to talk about Erling Haaland. Because uh, Erling Haaland, if you just look at this season, 36 goals. And uh, for in the Premier League, in totality, for Manchester City, you can see that he scored 52 goals. Uh, now, if you look, I know he's played for some big clubs. He's played for Salzburg, he's played for Dortmund. But you have to say that Manchester City and Hurling Haaland this season has been a turnaround of its own. But when we talk about the assist leading start stats, it is none other than Kevin De Bruyne right there with 16 assists and 92 goals in total. Now, the question for Manchester City leading into the season was, uh, can Erling Haaland really go out there and do a job what he was doing in Dortmund? Because well, in Dortmund, he was he was really good though, though but he did face a lot of injuries. Uh, he did have a lot of time where he was out of the pitch, but in this season, he did make a statement saying that he can possibly do a job which he was doing or maybe close to that as well. And even better than that, by scoring 36 goals, breaking the all-time Premier League record and not just that, helping City to win the Premier League. And look at the passes because with Manchester City, you know one thing for sure: the most number of passes as well, for twenty-three thousand one hundred and thirty-eight passes right there. Now that is the Manchester City of the dominant season they've had this season so far, uh, going past Arsenal and really, you know, stamping it before three to four games should be sealed into the season. So that's what Manchester City really did. And for Arsenal as well, losing not twenty game for us is something which they did not anticipate. Though it was pretty eminent that if City would have defeated Chelsea. City would have eventually went on to become the champions for sure. So City did go on to do that as well by playing possibly the second string squad. But let's look at Pep Guardiola, the evolution, because it's about Pep Guardiola and how he has turned around City. Because it's about the three-peat, 
Because remember, the only other manager to do it in the history of Premier League is Sir Alex Ferguson for Manchester United. Uh, when he did it, it was historic and nobody ever thought any manager in the history would be able to do it. Now, the next season they go, they'll be having that possible record of going past Manchester United and getting possibly the quadruple or the four title in a row where they can possibly get four titles in four years and establish utter and sure dominance in Premier League history of all time. So that's one thing which uh, you know, Pep Guardiola has on its hand. But let's look at Pep Guardiola and the spendings, right? Because... Uh, if you have to build a good team, you have to, of course, spend as well. Now, let's speak on, let's speak on the most number of uh, spending done by managers in the history of football. But right up there, uh, you can see Pep Guardiola is right up there in the top three, but not right up there at number one. It's Jose, Jose Mourinho up there at 1.6 billion, and Carlo Ancelotti with Real Madrid, of course, with 1.2 billion. And of course, you have Manuel Pellegrini as well, because he did have a lot of spending with Manchester City. You know, during his tenure from 2012 2016 as well. And but but you have to say that. Pep Guardiola did have a lot of spending in history, but it was also about collectively identifying the players for the system. Now, if you look at this season, for example, Brigham Haaland was one part of it, but look at the other players he's really brought into the system. Changing the system midway into the season in Jan in January, where he did feel like after the Nottingham Forest game, where they drew to Nottingham Forest, that's where he came about with the system of playing 3-2-4-1 or 3-2-2-3 where he started having two holding midfielders and two number 10s wide behind the striker. So this system which people really did not anticipate to be working really started working all of a sudden. So that's Pep Guardiola's class, isn't it? Because he brings about ideologies and philosophies and he embedded it right into the system of Manchester City. And it, all of a sudden Manchester City looked like a well-oiled machine. We're just going into playing the Premier League matches, the Liverpool game. Or for that example, even when they came up against Chelsea earlier in the season, they looked very, very comfortable. So that's what the switch has been for Manchester City, you can say, to, to a larger extent where Pep Guardiola really switched it on for Manchester City and the system started playing along pretty well. Now, you've talked about some of the primary players. You've talked about Gundogan, you've talked about Bernardo Silva this season, how vital they've been to this team and the running machine and the middle of the park, Wardry. I mean, people don't really appreciate him, but he, you have to say, after Sergio Busquets, one of the players who have got a very similar player profile in terms of holding the ball, releasing the ball pretty well, in terms of controlling the entire momentum or controlling the entire play in the center of the park in terms of the tempo has been Rodri. His interceptions has been rightly perfect. Him, him actually dropping in deep in times of when the attackers or a fullback really goes up has been phenomenal for them in half spaces. Rodri's impact for Manchester City has been impeccable. And there have been days where he goes really up upfield in zone 14. You might see Rodri and John Stones right up there in zone 14. So that's something which you get from Rodri as well. And even his attacking uh, uh, progress in the final third has been proven even more as the season has pro progressed and with a new system in place as well for Pep Guardiola. So Pep Guardiola, the manager, has always been about adaptations, has always been about changing very closely. But let's look at a very interesting stat, isn't it? Because uh, it's been about Pep Guardiola, how he's turned around for uh, in all leagues where he's gone, 11 titles. Now, he has won two or uh, three peats in Spain, three peats in uh, uh, Bundesliga and in English football. So he's the first manager in the history of football to do it. And the 15 seasons he has coached, he's won 11 of them. So can you say him to be a serial league winner? Of course, you have to give him that credit. Maybe the Champions League is something which is eluding him uh, after he left Barcelona and after the last 2011 Champions League prime. He's not quite had it in the Champions League. It's more than a decade now. But can he finally break the hoodoo by winning it in Istanbul by taking the Manchester City team? They're in the final now. That final step now. And remember, he has done one trebles before with the Barcelona team, the sixth chapel as well, in 2009 when he won six trophies in their first team ever to do it before Bayern in 2020. You have to say Pep Guardiola has done it all in the short career as a manager. 15 seasons is not a lot of seasons because if you look at his counterpart in Jose Mourinho, he took over Porto, he took over Inter Milan and uh, he had Chelsea and he had a lot of success in the initial part of his career. That's where, you know, the you know that's where you can say uh, Jose Mourinho has seen a lot more cup, top, cup titles in a very short while as a manager during his initial days. Similarly, even for Pep Guardiola in 15 seasons, he's managed three different clubs, uh, three uh, three pits and the nine titles in two uh, in that 11 season, 11 titles you can say came consecutively, and that's where Pep Guardiola really stands out as a manager. And now, if you have to talk about some of the greatest moments ever, you have to say about uh, the six triple, as I already mentioned, and of, co of course, about uh, with uh, Manchester City, this could be possibly one of his greatest seasons as well. Now, what is ahead for Manchester City? Now, this is a transition season which they have to possibly anticipate because Gundogan, uh, maybe Bernardo Silva, 
And even for the matter, even Laporte might be on their way off from Etihad to maybe other European teams. So this is where Manchester City will have to maybe refresh their squads and look forward to the new season with new players, with new energy. Uh, and that's where Pep Guardiola has been a mastermind in this, where he's been extremely good in terms of refreshing the squad. Remember Jack Grealish? It's a very peculiar story in itself. When Manchester City bought him from uh, 400 million from Aston Villa, and he did not perform in the first day. He did not get, maybe give the numbers as a lot of people did expect for a hundred million buy. But look at this season: him coming in, replacing Phil Foden on the left hand side, him going in and being a pivotal player in the in the in the Champions League run into the final, and not just that in the Premier League win as well. His contribution maybe statistically might not be very good in terms of goals and assists, but his goal contribution in terms of him creating the play, in terms of his defensive work rate, in terms of his positional awareness, in terms of his build-up play has been exceptional for Jack Grealish. And you possibly have seen the Jack Grealish even better than the one which we saw in Aston Villa as well. Him linking up with Gundogan on the left half spaces has been impeccable. Him taking on the opposition fullbacks has been outstanding. For example, the Champions League semi-final is one classic case of it, which we had already discussed on our channel. So that's what we're talking about, right? How he has understood the players, given them that extra bit of rope and made them perform as well. Now, he's gone with Kyle Walker, he's gone with Akanji, he's gone with Nathan Ake. A lot of, a lot of people might have thought at the start of the season, uh, uh, Akanji and Nathan Ake might not even be starters for, for a lot of reasons. But he has really shown why the ball-playing defenders is such a vital part of his system and is entrusted in them very similarly. Now, if you look at Arteta, Javi, Pep, Guardiola, um, yeah, even for the matter, even, even in Bundesliga, you, know, you have to talk about uh, when Nagelsmann was there. All these managers have a very similar thinking. You know, it's about carrying the ball and keeping the positional play. And that's really worked for a lot of reasons. Even Napoli in Serie A, they've got a very similar way of playing. Even if you look at Brighton this season, maybe is the league moving towards a way where you need to keep the ball more, be more aggressive with the ball, press more higher? Maybe it is. You know, we are seeing the transition all across the world. And Napoli being a classic example of it. Even, even Barcelona in, in Spain did, did that very perfectly. Arsenal for the longer part of the season did that. So maybe we're seeing that even more prominently now where you need a certain philosophy, more aggressive nature from the managers where they're able to take more risk with the players, move up the field, press more higher. And that's what Pep Guardiola has been doing that very perfectly. And that's what one thing which works in league football. Maybe you can still argue about that in the cup footballs where you need to be managing the teams better, managing the time better, managing the game better in terms of maybe scoring a goal, you know, staying back a little bit, which is counted by Jose Mourinho is a very good man at that. So that's what we're talking about for Manchester City. Manchester City, the blue moon has risen pretty fast and blue moon is, is bright and shining up there in the sky right now in, in all the city of Manchester for sure. Now that has been the story of Manchester City. Dominance of the, the new Manchester side over the last one decade has been impeccable and winning close to... Uh, Seven titles in the last one decade has been one hallmark for the Manchester City side because from 2012 to now, they've really been a machine for one. So many titles under three different managers, of course, but Pep Guardiola has been that manager which has given them the dominance. And that's what really led Manchester City into better things as well. Now, that is about it from us. I really hope you enjoyed this video, the story of Manchester City, the story of Pep Guardiola, how he's really turned it around for Manchester City, how he's inbuilt a system for Manchester City, maybe even for futures to also take it up and carry the legacy forward. Now, do let us know in the comments if you think Manchester City is one of the best teams in Europe at this point or the best team in the world at this point. Can Manchester City go and break Manchester United's record as well? And can Manchester City win the triple? Do so. Do let us know that in the comments. And do not forget to check out our courses. The link is there in the description. And also give a follow on the Instagram page where we keep updating you with all the latest whiz, all the latest trivia, and all the latest sporting updates all across the world. And also give a subscription to this channel so we can keep bringing you all the latest videos and some interesting stats for you. We'll be doing a live stream, so do join us for that and ask your questions live with us so we can take it up and answer it on live stream. Thank you and have a good time, all of you. Bye-bye.